Welcome to Real Talk and ELT, a podcast that talks about the reality of teaching English. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Real Talk and ELT. I am here by myself, and I'm the final, the final division of this episode where we're looking at the Twee app to use it for your lesson planning and different tools that you can use. So the only one that we haven't done in the last one is speaking because it has seven tools here. So let's look through them. We've got creating a dialogue at any topic. We've seen that before. Find discussion questions. We've also seen this before and the other categories. Find an instru- find interesting facts on a given topic, which is new. So we'll look into that one. Create a list of advantages and disadvantages on a given topic. Find quotes by famous people on a topic. We've already seen that one. Agree or disagree with other opinions. We've seen that one as well. And lead in activities for a text, which is something new. So I'm not going to go through the ones that we've already seen. Um, I'll do a super quick, but I'm not going to have them go through and and produce anything. So the first one, um, creating a dialogue of any topic, we've seen this before. So you paste your your topic here or a text, and then you can you can highlight target vocabulary, and then it just pops out with a dialogue, a discussion. You can shorten it. You can make it simpler, more complex, and that's it. Um, we've seen that in some of the other ones, so uh, I'm not going to go through it again. The next one is find discussion questions. Also, we've seen this. Um, uh, so you paste your topic, put some keywords, and then you can choose the level if it's simple or advanced, and it'll give you a bunch of topics for discussion. Uh, interesting facts. We haven't seen this yet. So let's look at this here and we've been using this throughout this series so i'm just going to continue to use it just to see what pops up so we have central bank digital currencies which is the topic from the wall street journal article that i was using uh we'll keep the level at simple though you can have simple intermediate advanced we'll look at the three differences and here we go and it gives us 10 interesting facts about CBDC. It's like CBDC is a digital version of fiat money. It's issued by central banks and backed by the government. China is leading in the development of CBDC and with its digital one, it aims to improve efficiency. Okay, so those are the simple ones. Let's see intermediate, see if there's any change. Same facts, just slightly different in their presentation, like it's slightly more complex, but the same same types of facts and the advanced level. Same 10 facts, just in slightly different way with a little bit more yeah nothing changes too much there's a couple that are different like in the simple one that has sweden and the bahamas um in the intermediate one it doesn't mention those and uh it, uh, it mentions sweden again and the advanced but not the bahamas so some minor changes um i guess you can pick and choose from all three levels, which one is going to be most appropriate. It doesn't seem as if the facts are so complex in the difference between simple and advanced that students wouldn't be able to understand them. So you can kind of pick and choose what you want there. Um, let's see, create a list of advantages and disadvantages on a given topic. This might be fun. So let's try this again. So central, oops, Think digital. Again, we have simple in advance for the levels. Let's see what it pops out with. Pros and cons list. So advantages, disadvantages, and relatively simple sentences. So that would be easy for students to digest. Ah, these sentences in the advanced level are, at least the first one is much more advanced in comparison, um, for example, Advantages makes transactions quicker and easier would be the simple. 
Um, and then the advantage, the first advantage listed with the advanced level would be increased financial inclusion, allowing more people to access banking services and electronic payments. So eh, there is there is a bit of a difference in the language that's being used here, but that would be a really good uh, way for you to get pros and cons lists and people to generate their own pros and cons lists. And then um, again, we just have to be careful with the accuracy of the statements because we know that the the systems, the AI system is being trained off of specific data sets and we don't know what the data sets are and whether or not the information is reliable because if it's being trained off of the internet then we know that the internet has a bunch of false information so be careful of that um so famous quotes we've seen that before it was in the writing section and we've also seen in writing the agree or disagree opinions um so pretty much you just put a topic put a topic there and then it'll generate something but the last one that i did want to look at here is the lead in activities for a text so uh, I'm just going to use the beginning of the text here because we've been using this article for the past few episodes in this series. So why not? We'll just put it here and do the magic. All right. So in less than a minute, it popped up with three lead in activities. So let's see what they've got. So digital... The first one is digital currency brainstorm. Divide the class into pairs or small groups and give them five minutes to brainstorm all the list of all the digital currency they've heard about or known about. And after the five minutes brainstorm, ask each group to share their list and discuss their understanding of the currency, then let them introduce the text, blah, blah, blah. The next one is a pro and cons debate. So you divide the class into two groups, assign the group uh, to argue the pros of digital currency. The other one's the cons, give them 10 minutes, it gives you the instructions and a digital currency survey. So create a short survey with questions related to digital currencies and ask the students to complete it individually. Like the question, they, and they actually give the questions. The questions can include, oh, they give you some, not all of them. Have you ever used digital currency? Do you think digital currencies will replace physical currencies in the future? After the survey, blah, then you have them introduce the text. Okay, so it, it's all based off of a text. Uh, so you're going to have to have a text to be able to generate the lead-ins because it doesn't look like you're able to create these lead-in activities without having a text. You can't just, for example, you can't just put, let's try it again, actually. Uh, let me see if I can just put a topic here. I know that I'm not supposed to, according to the rules, according to the instructions. Digital. It doesn't say, it says you have to have. Yeah, see, it says need a text here. So they. Yeah, see, these aren't really good ones either. So brainstorming, debate, or vocabulary matching. But, mm, oh, they're not bad, but it, it was much more detailed when it had an actual text to work off of. And I think it was probably more focused on what the text was saying as opposed to just kind of random activities. Not that these are random. I mean, it, it is in the, the, the vein of central bank digital currencies, but... Uh, hmm. yeah. So it gives you some examples and some things that you can look at. I'm not sure, uh, how useful it is if it's, you know, if it's the same things, if it's a repetitive, let's see if it repeats itself over and over again, I would like to see what happens there. So I put the same text in <clears throat> and it's producing... Diff uh, one different. So it did a brainstorming again and a debate again. This one's new, the lead in activity two with news articles. So we provide a selection of recent news articles about CBDCs from reputable sources such as the Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg or Financial Times. Have them read the articles. That is not a lead in activity, by the way, because that all of these are going to take quite a bit of time. These are like brainstorming. These are you know, things where you can introduce the text, but these are these are not quick in terms of like the ideas that we see as lead-ins, like a five minute contextualization type of thing that's very collaborative. That is not what you're getting here. But that's not to say that these activities are 
bad. It's just not what we would consider necessary. I think in Brazil, at least, or kind of an English language teaching, lead-ins are kind of five minutes contextualization, get the schemata like activated and, and look at what we're going to talk about today, put some parameters on the context, and then move on to the to the lesson. This is not what we're seeing here, but that's not necessarily that it's a bad thing, but you might have to use it in a different way or modify them. So, so that's what we've got for the speaking tools at Tweet. Hopefully this whole episode has been helpful for you. I know that I've broke it down into like several different ones because there's lots of stuff going on. Um, but let me know if you use it and how you use it and uh, feel free to comment or send me a message on how you do use it. Uh, enjoy, enjoy using the tool. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Real Talk and ELT. Want to join the conversation? Head on over to Instagram at Kelly Pennington ELT and send me a message. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube or Spotify channel to stay up to date. And of course, take care of yourself, your health, your vibe, and your tribe. Until next time.